I'm scared. Come on, Mindy, honey. Be a big girl now. Is it gonna hurt bad? Only for a second, sugar. A handgun bullet travels at more than... 700 miles an hour. 700 miles an hour. So the force is gonna take you off your feet for sure, but it's really no more painful than a punch in the chest. I hate getting punched in the chest. You're gonna be fine, baby doll. <laughs> In case you're curious, the clip at the beginning there was from the movie Kick-Ass, which is kind of a cool, fun movie. I wouldn't recommend the second one, but the first one was fun. Uh, is it child abuse to raise your kids in a prepping atmosphere? Um, it's a question that I feel has um, been sort of floating around, kind of almost unasked uh, on YouTube. Um, uh, I know one uh, channel that uh, that I like. Uh, the guy uh, there had been harassed by some somebody who had sent like child protective services to his house, claiming he was you know abusing his kids, um, you know, with his his prepper lifestyle. Uh, I know even for myself, uh, I've gotten you know questions, you know, not not mean spirited questions, but questions on my uh, <coughs> comment feed. Uh, you know, or people saying, you know, you, you need to, like, you know, just lighten up and not be, you know, so afraid of everything, you know, get out and experience the world, you know, don't be hiding in your, in your home. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, the, the, the question is out there, and I think there's a couple ways of, um, of addressing the question. And the first um, uh, comes right off of, you know, what I mentioned about my experience, people um, who, you know, probably are not preppers themselves, uh, looking at preppers and uh, sort of having an imagined sense of what their lives might be like. Uh, people watching my channel right now, which is a prepping channel, uh, all they really see from me all the time is prepping this, prepping that, prepping 24-7. So um, sort of the, the cartoonish uh, idea that they get in their head is that that must be all that my life is. Uh, you know, I must just hide in my house all day and not do anything. Um, the reality of my life is, uh, you know, I, I get out, you know, take take the, the boy out and we you know, go to museums, we go to shows, we go to restaurants. Um, one of uh, River's favorite places on the whole planet is a place called Santa's Village. We've been there so many times. Um, here's a video clip of the first time that we uh, visited there. Uh, what you're seeing now is his reaction about 10 seconds after he got off of the first uh, amusement park ride and he realized what his how awesome his day was about to be when he finally realized what an amusement park is. Um, so, um, <coughs> people have an imagined sense of what um, you know, it must be like to be a prepper and be a kid with prepper parents. Um, and I'm not really going to address that because that's just sort of fantasy. That you might as well make a video about, like, um, you know, are all Mexicans abusing their kids, or are all Maoists abusing their kids, you know, are, are conservatives abusing their kids? I, I mean, it's just, you could come up with an imaginary sort of sense of, uh, you know, what these, those people are doing to their kids, and then you could, you know, criticize that, uh, that imaginary uh, edifice. It's called a straw man argument, um, uh, in terms of, like, rhetorical arguments. Um, where you, you, you create uh, something fake and then you, you rip it down um, uh, very effectively because it was never anything real to begin with. So I'm not going to really um, address that at all because you know people can think whatever they want to think. But uh, I think that there probably are a couple sort of commonalities, of, uh, uh, real commonalities between lots of different preppers and, uh, and how that impacts the way that they, they might be raising their kids. And um, and those two things I, I think that are probably pretty common and ubiquitous among most preppers is that most of us tend to be um, a little bit more uh, sort of DIY, self-sufficient. Uh, you know, that's sort of, we see that, we feel that we can't really ultimately fully depend on our, our society and culture, so we try to um, bring a lot of that back home and, and be more self-reliant. Um, I think that's pretty common amongst most preppers, if, if, if not all of them. Um, secondly, uh, I think that most of us tend to be um, more uh, intentional and um, we try to be more aware of potential dangers uh, uh, that are around us. 
Um, and, and a lot of those dangers are things that, uh, you know, the average person might think are kind of silly, like there could never be an actual economic collapse, or there could never be an actual, I don't know, EMP, war, anything. You know, all the things that constantly happen through history, those things are all done and they could never actually happen to us ever again. Um, <laughs> you can see how much credence I put in that, uh, that, that, that uh, type, type of thinking. But, um, you know, that's sort of the average American's way of looking at things, is that all that stuff happened in the past, maybe a lot of them aren't even aware that it happened in the past, um, but none of that could ever happen again and, and we're, we're cool and it's sort of paranoid to be thinking about that. Uh, or passing any of those sort of concerns down to your kids. Um, so I, th I think those are sort of the two streams of, um, of common uh, ground that I think most preppers would have. Uh, so let's think a little bit about that. Like, uh, <clears throat> is it abusive to your kids to uh, live a more self-sufficient lifestyle? Is it a more abusive to your kids um, to foster an awareness of different sorts of concerns or dangers that they might want to be aware of themselves. Um, <coughs> why don't we talk about the first one first? Sorry, I still got this cold. No, I don't have a cold. I have this cough. It's just an irritating cough. Um, and the first one was uh, more self-sufficient living. Uh, I, I think that a lot of us think that maybe one day there may not be any restaurants open. So it would be good to, you know, know how to make your, pre prepare your own food. Um, I think that uh, some preppers think that maybe um, utilities might get cut out to your home at some point, so it might be good to know how to cook without having electricity or, or whatever, uh, uh, you know, if you have natural gas being pumped to your house. Uh, you know, how, how to safely make a fire to cook food. Um, some people might think that the grocery stores may uh, at some point not always have food available. Uh, so is it important to learn how to garden and hunt and things like that? Now those are extra <coughs> uh, burdens of effort that we put on ourselves and um, for people who are trying to pass down that sort of thinking down to their kids, it's a burden that they're sort of putting on their kids. And is that abusive um, to ex expect a kid to know how to prepare their own food? To maybe know how to make a fire so they could prepare food? To know how to hunt, potentially, or garden? Um, the definition of abuse uh, is uh, the misuse of something or the um, uh, violent or cruel treatment of something. Um, and I think there's a, yeah, I, I suppose people can make an argument that it's cruel to uh, expect your kids to learn how to make their own food. <laughs> I, uh, I, there's probably not that many people that would think that would be cruel. There might be some people that think that it's cruel to expect your kids to know how to safely make a fire. You know, you know when you're learning that stuff, occasionally get a little bit burned. Um, uh, some people might think that that's cruel. Some people might think that it's cruel to teach uh, children how to hunt, uh, how to fashion a weapon from nothing. Uh, you know, how to how to use a how to use a knife. Uh, you know, because there's occasionally you know accidents with knives. Um, some people may think that there's a, a cruelty to that, uh, that there's, a, um, there's an abuse factor. I don't personally think that. Uh, I think that it's important to know those things so that um, if you're ever in trouble, you have these skills to fall back on. I think it's kind of abusive not to teach kids that stuff. I think that you have to look at the way that you think the world is and uh, you have to raise your kids for that world. Um, I feel that uh, sort of... Like I said, it's stereotypical to kind of group all preppers together, but I'm going to do the same crime and I'm going to group all non-prepping Americans together. Uh, and like sort of the stereotypical vision of that is, you know, the person that, uh, you know, never says no to the kids. And, uh, you know, the kids are overweight, and they've got diabetes, um, uh, a lot of them have trouble uh, focusing on tasks because they're always in front of a screen. Um, again, it's just a stereotype. Uh, and it's, it's, it is as inaccurate or... Um, as the, you know, the stereotype, I think, of preppers. But it's, it's sort of the polar opposite of the prepping idea about not teaching your kids to be concerned about things, not teaching your kids to be self-sufficient. And I think that um, a decent argument could be made that that is an abusive uh, form of parenting, to not give your kids the skills that they need. I think a lot of kids today... Um, gosh, this is, gonna, this is gonna come off wrong. Um, <laughs> it's gonna sound like I'm like some, just some old white dude uh, all the kids today, you know. Um, but I, I, I think that, <clears throat> you know, just looking through news articles, uh, there is a group of 
uh, people, you know, specifically young people, um, that are constantly being disturbed and shocked and terrified by things. Uh, you know, people joke about, like, you know, they have to rush off to their safe spaces. Um, and the safe spaces aren't just for them. I have um, people that claim that they're conservative viewers of my channel um, that announce periodically that they need to run off to their safe space for me because I'm just offensively liberal. So they have to go off to their safe space. So safe spaces are not just for um, uh, ultra-liberal, like, coddled youth, uh, you know. Uh, all sorts of people that need their safe spaces. Uh, some say people's safe spaces take the form of uh, alcohol. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't go like pointing fingers at just at one group because there's lots of groups that, uh, you know, love them their, their safe space. But, um, but I, I, I don't think that it can be argued against uh, that there, uh, there is a softness in a lot of uh, young people and that they, um, uh, they suffer because of that. Uh, when something happens in their lives uh, that's just shocking, it just it pushes them to this really, this really bad place, dude. You know? um, and uh, you saw a lot of it after the Trump elections. You know, just kids freaking out um, about about the whole thing. Um, that there's just a very shallowness to their existence. And when things go above and beyond that, it just it rattles them to their core. And I think that that's uh, to not prepare your kids against that type of trauma, I think, is, is kind of abusive. I think that it's important um, to give a, kids a sense of the things that can happen in the world so that when things that they think are negative happen, that they're not just going to totally, you know, clam up and just freak out. Like, uh, even for adults, the, uh, the terror attacks of 9-11. I remember after that, you know, everyone said, oh, it changed the world. And it did change the world because people allowed it to change the world. Um, you know, people were just shocked. They couldn't believe that had happened. If anyone who was paying attention to the news had been paying attention to world events, it wasn't shocking that the uh, events of 9-11 happened. It was sort of like, oh, okay, well, they finally went ahead and they did it. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it didn't change my worldview at all. Um, it didn't make me go running off saying, here, take my freedoms. I don't want them. Keep me safe. Um, it, uh, it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a shock to me. Um, e e e even a little closer to home here, uh, we had the, the Boston bombing uh, after the marathon, the Boston Marathon. Uh, a couple of people got killed, a few people got killed, a lot of people got their, la their limbs amputated. Um, I was right there when that, uh, like just after that happened. I was within five feet or so of where they dropped the backpacks. Um, and I, I just left like 30 minutes beforehand. I was shooting with a film crew there. Maybe they were potentially waiting for us to leave so they wouldn't be on camera possibly. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I was, I was right there. Uh, and, you know, if my theory about them waiting for us to leave it wasn't accurate, you know, I, I could have been one of the victims. But I didn't go around for a week shuddering, being terrified, saying, oh, we need to take my freedoms, take my freedoms. Um, and I think it's important to pass that kind of resilience on to kids. Uh, and if it takes the form of uh, warning kids about potential dangers that are in the world so that when they happen, the kids don't freak out, I think that's a positive thing. Uh, you know, some people would say, oh, you know, you're going to scare your kids if you, you tell them that, you know, economies don't last forever, if you're going to tell them that war is, is possible. Um, uh, you know, you're going to unnecessarily freak out your kids. And uh, for my little boy, he's five years old, when, when we do uh, security things around the house, you know, I don't go talking to him about how, like, someone could break in tonight and steal all your toys or, or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't get into that. We talk about the nuts and bolts of what I'm doing on the security procedures. I'm not going to go into the, you know, examples of the security, security procedures. If you watch my channel, you know, I do not talk about security procedures at, at my home. I think that's silly to talk about that online. Um, but, uh, you know, there are things that we do, and uh, they were f for potential dangers. And uh, I'm teaching my kid the skills that he needs to, um, uh, to cope with those potential dangers someday, but I'm not, at this point, talking all about the fears and all about the dangers. Uh, my hope is, is that by the time I, he gets to a point where he can handle thinking about some of those dangers and fears, that he'll, he'll already have learned all the skills that he needs to sort of, uh, you know, cope with those things. Um, so that, um, 
they won't seem so terrible once, he, once we finally have those kind of conversations. So what do you think about it? Do you think that, you know, forcing your kids to live this, like, more DIY sort of self-sufficient lifestyle uh, occasionally can qualify as child abuse? Do you think if it's taken to a certain extent it can be child abuse? Do you think, you know, potentially freaking your kids out about dangers that the rest of the world wants to pretend aren't there, uh, do you feel that that's abusive to your kids, psychologically abusive to them? What do you think? I, I think it's a big question. I think it's an important question. I think it's a question that people should talk about more openly um, as opposed to uh, it just sort of being a subtext under the surface there. Yeah. I'd like to start the conversation. <laughs> do let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.